good? It is after six, so we are going to get started. Welcome everybody to the second monthly meeting of the Plattsburgh Parking Advisory Committee. Uh, let's go through and take the roll call. Uh, Matt Miller, present. Levi Ritter. Here. Mike Bissett. Here. Bob Garcia. Here. Dave Merkel. Here. Joe Rotella. Here. Rodney Brown. Ethan Vinson. Here. Kathleen Mahoney Myers. Here. Pat McFarlane. Mary Ann Buckholt Ryder. Johnny Jones. Here. Okay, um, so Pat and Rodney were unable to make it tonight, but we'll certainly fill them in with uh, what we discuss. Uh, comments from the chair. Um, I don't have anything to start off tonight. I know we've been exchanging emails for a week or two, so we'll just get right to the part of the agenda where the public is invited to comment on anything that's on the agenda for tonight, just agenda items only. Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to the first item on the agenda, which is a report from Chief Ritter detailing the current parking system enforcement statistics for the past month. So there's a, a much larger document, but the, the finer points from it were the uh, month of January, 482 tickets were issued. The, the most notable statistics are 290 tickets for time zone parking, which is what we started enforcing in January, and 61 were related to parking ban for snow removal. The total revenue generated as a result of those was $7,275.75 for the month of January. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions for the chief before we move on? Okay. Uh, number two, motion to remove item 2A from the table, and that's the discussion of adjustments to the parking time limits downtown. Do I have a motion by the chief? A second? Second. Second by Bob. Uh, all in favor to remove it from the table? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. All right, so discussion of adjustments to the parking time limits downtown. Uh, I know I had mentioned in my email to the group last week that given the discussion that we're going to have later tonight about the transition to a managed and paid parking system, uh, any adjustments to the existing time limits would be temporary and any changes that that would have on the parking trends that might be prevalent in the city would be difficult to assess because we don't have any analytical way to track it. It would be based on anecdotal, ev anecdotal evidence of people watching outside their storefronts to see what parking would be available and when. Um, so I know I had suggested that we table this motion indefinitely. Now that does not take it off the table permanently. It just allows us to take it off the agenda now so we don't have to keep revisiting it every meeting. Um, if at some point in the future, and it probably will come up again, we can certainly put it back on the agenda for further discussion. So do I have a motion to indefinitely postpone discussion on this item until a later time? This is 3A? This is 2A. Okay. So the basis of that is that until we decide whether it's going to be permitted or metered or whatever, whatever else, it's irrelevant, right? It's irrelevant. Any change we make is, they'd be temporary and we wouldn't have any way to evaluate how effective they would okay. be. Do I have a motion? Oh. Uh, moved by Ethan, second by Chief. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Seems that I'm on this could be changed if we're 
This is the talk about the two hour parking, 30 minute parking, 10 minute parking. Mm -hmm. I, I've talked to some downtown business owners and residents in it, but I don't see much of the point of the 30 minute parking or the 10 minute parking, at least on Market Street. Okay. Um, I know it's just temporary, but uh, until such a um, permanent decision is made, it, it does seem like the 30 minute parking uh, could be increased to an hour. Um, and uh, is Mike here? That's just changing so uh, signs on Market Street, right? Yes, it's changing signs. It's pretty expensive. It's, yeah, it's material labor and to do it for a temporary change, and we're not quite sure. Take some of the cat money. You can use it towards the signs. <laughs> I don't know exactly how much it will cost. I'm not too gung ho about it, but it, it does seem like uh, the, uh, the third month parking. Especially at Market Street, where most of the people that park there are, are um, patronizing the uh, restaurants, is a little too little of time. Especially the 10 minute from um, the just carrot. Although I'm not sure if it's been uh, enforced um, stringently. Uh, is she giving tickets for 10 minutes of that? If they're over time, yeah. Like I said, if the committee doesn't think that it should be addressed, I'm fine about that. I just don't necessarily okay. think that it should be so well. Uh, would anybody like to discuss that further, upping the time limits from 30 and 10 to... Pat, what are you thinking? Like, uh, bump it up, everything up to an hour Man, minimum? Bump everything that's under an hour up to an hour. Makes sense, right? Okay. Um, any further discussion? Anybody want to talk about that any further? Well, I kind of feel like it makes sense. I mean, I've been to a few restaurants downtown, and sometimes just to get your food for your day or your half hour. I mean, not all the time that it happens, but it does happen. Okay. And, you know, the fact you have to get up and park in a totally different zone and then walk all the way back to the restaurant, I don't know, it seems a little too much if you ask me. But that's my opinion. My opinion. So we're talking basically lunchtime trade? Because, I mean, after 4 o'clock, this person's not on, and I don't see many black and whites writing tickets. Right. And evening is not on. That's a fair point, and I haven't heard many complaints of people like that. You know, you, you do the parking, you know, all the extended here, you got the sandwich shop across, across the street. He'd love 10 minutes. Come in, order, pick up and go. Uh, Hobies, pick up and go. You know, so it's, I just think, leave it the way it is right now, but we can come up with a, a final plan. I mean, it's going to cost money to change the signs. Who's going to pay for that? You and yeah. me, and everybody else yeah. in here. And there's also the question of we'd be making a decision based on the comments right. of a few business owners. And while that's important input, I think it's more prudent to wait until we have some data before we uh, start making any decisions like that. Even aside from data, you know, what we're looking at is perhaps permits parking, which would, you know, change everything anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing something different, it makes sense to put this on the table until we decide exactly how we're going to handle it or how we would like the city to handle it. Okay. Um, so we had a motion to table the uh, motion indefinitely. Um, I know Pat, you chimed in, so let's just do that one more time. Uh, Ethan, you made a motion. Uh, Chief, you seconded. So. All in favor of tabling indefinitely the discussion on adjustments to the downtown parking time limits? Uh, yes. Aye. 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 All Aye. opposed? Okay, motion carries, and we'll put that on the back burner for now. Uh, motion to remove item 3A from the table, and this is the discussion of the current parking options to replace the capacity of the Durkee Street parking lot. Do I have a motion to remove it from the table? So I actually have a few questions on that. I mean, so I work downtown, I mean, I see this parking lot being built up quite frequently. Um, and to see some of the adjustments that we're to make up with this parking space, I just don't see where they see it, unless they start taking over other people's property. Mm -hmm. And, and John, just give me one second, because we do need to make a motion to remove oh. it from the table formally. So that's okay. We'll discuss it after. Uh, do I have a motion to remove it from the table? Dave, uh, second. Chief, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 
Okay, so it's off the table. Uh, so the discussion of the options to replace turkey capacity, and Johnny, you were saying? Uh, well, I basically before. Okay. <laughs> But I also, like, as I was saying before, too, um, I see that parking lot filled to pretty much max capacity every single day. It's even worse when, you know, they have parking vans and, um, you know, seeing some of these CPS workers and, you know, foster care workers that have to lug these car seats around, sometimes two at a time. I mean, to make them walk quite a distance with these things in their hands when they're in a rush, I don't really see the fairness in that either. You're talking about DSS employees? Right. Yeah. And I mean, there's also other businesses right there that, you know, pretty much depend on the parking in the, the dirty street parking area, you know, for their business. And I feel like they would really be taking away more from their businesses to, uh, to do this. Plus, there's the emergency stale parking. I mean, that's where people park when they can't park on the street or in the, you know. Of course, if the permit thing is instituted, that won't be real relevant. Right. I think if there's permit parking, their snow ban would still probably over supersede any of that. So we would still need some adjustment. I think I think the purpose of tabling this for now is that regardless of whatever replacement options, the council has dictated to us that we need to find a self-funded system for this parking. So no matter how we replace the parking, we need to find a funding source from it through the, the later things that we'll discuss today. Um, and so I think that's just, it's not that we're getting rid of never talking about this again, it's just for this meeting we need to start talking about the, the permit passing and just the general uh, RFP for a potential paid system. Yeah, I'll give the committee a brief update on where we're at with uh, replacement options. Uh, so uh, RFP was put out. A few weeks ago for a pre-demolition hazardous material survey for the Glens Falls building. Uh, those responses were due today. We've received several, which we'll be reviewing over the next week. Uh, once that hazmat survey is completed, uh, the results will get incorporated into a larger RFP to accomplish the actual demolition of the building. And once the site is cleared, of course, the new parking lot can be paved over on top of the cleared site. Uh, we are in discussion with Community Bank and also St. John's Church about some type of cooperative agreement with them, whether it be simply a shared use of their existing lots that would allow the city to use a certain number of spaces during certain times of the day, or if we can come to an amicable arrangement, some type of consolidation of those lots that would involve the closure of Division Street, which would allow us to pack several, many more parking spaces into that space than we would otherwise. Uh, we're looking at uh, diagonal parking options, both as a concept on Durkee Street along the to-be-constructed development down along in the parking lot, and also diagonal parking along Court Street. And we are working on a template for a shared use agreement that we can present to private lot owners downtown that would similarly to the discussions that we're having with Community Bank and the church allow the city to use portions of those lots during certain times of the day in exchange for certain accommodations. So we're finalizing what the city's comfortable starting out with for a negotiating position and then we will start reaching out to lot owners and see who is willing to have further discussion, who is not, proceed from there. And we're confident that between those three methods, we'll be able to find enough spaces to replace all of the parking that is expected to be lost on Durkee Street. And we are in ongoing discussions with prime companies about a number of spots that they would be willing to make available for public parking on the site itself, which would be built into uh, the eventual development agreement that we sign with them. So it sounds like you're proposing that the city pursue all sort of replacement parking options and that uh, we table this now um, until those are more concrete as of once those options are actually available and very help that people. Yeah, I would recommend until uh, we have uh, more detailed and more specific action items that the committee endorse that the city explore all of these options with the understanding that the committee will be updated as those options are explored. 
Uh, does anybody have any comments on that? I have a question on that. Yeah. Uh, for the diagonal parking in the streets, uh, so when the parking ban is in effect, does that affect those parking spots? Yes, it would. Yeah, I think any on street parking, right, Mike? It would. I mean, we'd have to look at not only the, the new parking spaces, but the parking ban and the system itself. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a much greater. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something that. You know, as, as these meetings go on, we'll probably have a more detailed discussion about the current way that the city handles uh, parking during snow emergencies and whether there is a better or more efficient way to do it. So, uh, anybody have any further discussion? So, the discussions with the private parking lot owners are what you said, but arrangements I mean are we talking paying them for these spaces is how do we enumerate the number of spaces and what we pay per space or yeah most of the agreements that's putting the bill for it sure most of the agreements that we have looked at that other cities have put in place it's a type of revenue sharing model so if the city were to enter into a shared use agreement and sell permits to park on a private lot and the owner agrees to allow for the collection of parking fees on that lot as part of the city's larger paid system, then the city would deduct any maintenance and administrative costs that they incur uh, by administering that system, and then whatever's left over would be split 50-50 between the city and the private lot owner. Okay, but private lot owners are paying for parking through the city. I mean, the parking that lot that I rent space in, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure they're paying the same penalty or whatever you want, the tax that we all pay. The special in the assessment, yeah, special assessment, assessment district. Right. Yeah. Um, why would, why in the world would they want to do that? I mean, they, I'm paying them, you know, whatever I am for two or three. Well, lots actually, the doing it themselves, and half the time we can't park there because people from the courthouse are parking there illegally. Right. And we're paying for four spots. Well, that would make sense. I, I would, so I guess the point is we don't know what they would agree to until we talk to them or talk to them more. But if the city was enforcing parking on that and the people from the court were parking there illegally, then they It's private to property. Well, you can't saying, enforce it. How much money, yeah, you can't enforce it. How much money are they willing to lose when they can rent these spots now? I mean, I think that's kind of a pipe dream. I don't think the city's going to get anywhere with that. Anybody who owns a lot that is using it and renting it now isn't going to be willing to let you rent it and take half the proceeds. Why should they? They're getting all the proceeds. Well, if they work it out at the end of the month, they're going to come out ahead rather than, I know a few parking lots around town where there's never more than five or ten cars in the lot and it's easily can accommodate 50 or 60 spaces. Yeah, but that's also because the people who own it are charging way more than, you know, the lots are going, the spaces are going for. Oh, sure. So. And if the city goes to somebody and offers them a deal where they get their entire capacity sold and they know that they have a certain amount of money coming at the end of the month that might move them off of the fence. So. I think I know the owners of all those lots. And the reason they're not full is because they're not willing to take a cut. They're not huh? willing to take a, a decrease. I think that that is a pipe dream for the city to think that the, that's an alternative. I think you're really, what you really need to think about are things that the city can actually own or be in control of. You know, you can't count on the private owners. They may or may not sign on. They may or may not agree. Yeah, and if we and approach all of the private lawn owners and none of them are willing to have a conversation, then certainly we'll look at other options for replacing the parking. It just strikes me that I think that we are, we're, you know, jumping through hoops and somersaults to replace parking that has been available to the citizens of this city and has been available to them for free. Um, so that somebody else can commandeer that space. It's not a very popular decision. I'm getting a lot of, a lot of feedback. What I don't understand is, is shared parking. As you go to St. John's Church, you go to shared parking, and they got a funeral today, and they got 30, 40 cars. Right. Mm -hmm. They're going to block it off? You say, well, you, you signed an agreement to share. I don't see that happening. Yeah. No, and any arrangements, so, any deals why don't we that we just make. Build a tiered parking lot where yeah. the bank is. Exactly. I mean, it's it's expensive. prohibitively expensive. How about the county oh, building yeah. something at the county courthouse? Yeah. I mean, really, the bulk of the yeah. difficulty <laughs> with parking downtown, county employees. 
They're the guys that need it. Whether you're looking at social services or you're looking at court, uh, uh, you guys need it, okay? I mean, everybody else is occasional. Everybody else is, you know, as needed. Mm -hmm. You're the guys that need it every day, so pony up, pay for a parking garage on your lot, and we'll all be behind you. Well, we got a few initial estimates for what it would cost to put up a two or three story garage, and it runs, depending on the details, between four and six million dollars. Okay. And the state of New York won't help you? Not to the point where we would be comfortable doing it without having a proof of concept, and this is where the later conversation about paid parking comes in. If we have two or three years of solid data under our belt, to show exactly how much revenue the city can expect from a paid system and how much debt service and how much interest that revenue would be able to cover. If it's feasible at that point to discuss building a multi-tiered lot, then I, certainly I we you, would. But you're still making your problem the city's problem. Whose okay. problem? The county's problem. Ah. Because who was here last time? All the county employees, everybody who worked for DSS, everybody who worked for the county, mm -hmm. you well, know. some other businesses yeah. here too. The majority <laughs> but, yeah. is county, yeah. Right. But the majority is county. That's why we need the extra spaces. You know, the people I see, maybe five or six people a day. Can they each park for an hour or two hours at, on Clinton Street? Sure, yeah, they can. Mm -hmm. They come and go. But it's the county that needs all these extra spaces. And we're going to pay for it in the long run. Well, I don't want to speak for Rodney because he's not here, uh, but, <laughs> but we are in discussions with the county about ways that we can work together and share the financial burden of replacing all this capacity. I don't want to get any more detail than that because nothing has been finalized and <coughs> council and county legislature haven't signed off on anything, but we are in discussions and they have expressed a willingness to help us with this. I just think now we're we'll jumping through hoops to find space here, space there, over here, over there. Just build a tiered parking lot, suck it up. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you've been sucking us up for years on special assessment. Right. And we have never had an accountability. You know, uh, so what's the difference now? We, we spend, the city spends money on frivolous stuff. So spend on something that's worthwhile. And get the county to kick in, share it. Joe and Dr. Kate and I and probably Dave are all in the same boat. We are paying not only special assessment, we're paying our school and our county taxes. And they're significant. And I own a half a block. And I can't park in front of my building. I get a ticket. You know, why is that? Why, you know, what, what is the benefit to landowners paying taxes to business owners, you know, bringing business downtown? It, it's, a, it's a real issue. And I think that people are really unhappy about the Durkee Street parking lot going. I mean, people are livid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you build a two, two, three story parking lot. I mean, the 14 Durkee Street, the developer from Vermont, he built that parking lot, the uh, tiered mm -hmm. parking behind the building. Mm -hmm. There's no complaints there. I mean, yeah, he rents the lower level spaces to the tenants because they keep their car under cover, but the top is, is, is free for all, for anybody. Well, it's controlled I mean, for who the marshals or whoever are there, yeah, the, yeah, the marshals, FBI or somebody. Yeah, whatever. But, but yeah, you have a tiered parking and you do it by permit. You know, are we going to do it with special assessment to generate revenue? Because I like accountability for my money. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, I want to see a planner hanging downtown somewhere. I want to see a zip. Right. You know, and, and I think the cart's before the horse. The council, the mayor, the council said, we're going to have permitted parking. You know, so then, okay, here committee, it's yours. If they come up with that, then let them figure it out. I mean, to me, you have you have permits for semester for students. You can have employee parking permits. So much, uh, you know. Uh, so I mean, how is this going to work out? I mean, it's not simple. No, that's what we're discussing. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I, I realize that, but but they don't. They, it's been dumped. You know? We can discuss all we want, well, but the, the, the council is the one makes the decision. So this committee could right. recommend to the council. This is nothing but recommend. The and the decision's already been made. There, Basically, we're trying to find something to cover the, the council's ass. No offense, but you know. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's in the paper. It's false news. Was this? It was in the paper. You know that the mayor said we're going to try. We're going to. Uh, do a trial of, of um, permitted parking. Yeah. That was the mayor's idea. 
Yeah. Well, if he's in the driver's seat, he can push it. Acted like I don't suppose he could, but yeah. okay. I think it's on the agenda for tonight on whether it's a good idea. I have my own thoughts on that, and that they don't necessarily match with the mayor's. But I think right now, uh, the city would be foolish to not pursue um, different parking options, because like you said, people are upset with the Dirty Street lot. No, it was a decision made three years ago. I'm just saying maybe the county should also be pursuing something. Oh, absolutely. And that's kind of why we need to have these discussions. The county, I mean, we could say to the council, they make the count, don't let the county park anywhere in our parking lots and make them find their own park. Hmm. That would probably be pretty disastrous for the well, county. It'd be I'd pretty tough to do when they're paying right. special right. assessment district taxes. Be to do. Mm. What? The special assessment district is also on our purview here. I know, but you're going to tell a taxpayer that they can't park in the parking lot that they pay for? I'm not saying that we should. I, think they I, I yeah, no, I mean, think we all be wasting money in court on it. We all understand that you know the city has parking issues, the county has parking issues, but it's important we find some way to solve these issues together. The county is the largest employer in the downtown area. It's important we have some type of cooperative sense of cooperation with them to make sure that we're both getting something out of how all this shakes out. But them contributing to the solution is definitely something we're continuing to discuss. I, I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but basically we're trying to deal with a self-inflicted wound here. I think we should modify the DRI and take this whole project and put it down by the parking lot that everybody thinks is viable for us to use up here. They get waterfront view, so it makes the developer happy because they like working with waterfront. And you end up with not having to, to spend a bunch of money to fix something that isn't broken. Hey, that. Right now. <laughs> we can. What are we doing with this? The, the yeah. ship has sailed a long time ago. I know it has. But I mean, you guys haven't signed a deal with them yet, from what I heard. Let's get back. Not uh, yet. <laughs> All right. So, for the current item that we're on, what would we like to table this indefinitely? Would the committee like to endorse the city pursuing all options to replace the current capacity? Can I have a motion to have the city pursue all options to replace the current capacity? Can I have somebody motion that? I will Ethan? give a motion to that. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. Pat? All in favor? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't you get discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. No, I'm sorry. Discussion. Um, so if all options, I think one of the options should be send the RFP back out so you don't have to do, try to discover new parking spaces that don't exist. Which RFP? The uh, send a new RFP out for the Durkee Street lot. That's or an option. <laughs> I, I think that's an option. I mean, you're looking for parking capacity. You already have it there. Unfortunately, that is to uh, those funds that are dedicated to that project, which the city had agreed upon to pursue when they applied. I was on the DRI. I yes, know. exactly. We cannot. All the it is through. not allowed. We can't move those funds. Yep. Unless you ask. We've all, we, we've had that discussion. We've several had a lot of times, discussions, and it is not going to happen. So. I'll make a motion to move the question. Do I have a second? Chief, uh, all in favor of the motion to advise the city to pursue all possible options to replace the capacity? Uh, okay, yeah, fine. Let's do roll call. Uh, John? Yes or no to um, the city pursuing all available options for replacing the current capacity. That's what we're voting on. Motion 3A. Motion 3A. Uh, we'll say no. Yes. 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 No. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody works for the city. Votes yes, and everybody who doesn't votes no. So you don't want the city to pursue alternate parking? So we'll be out to Along the lines that they're talking about? Well, you're going to own it, that's for sure. Yep. So is that a tie vote? 
It's a tie vote. You break it, Mr. Miller. Aye. I vote aye. All right. Moving on to item number four, motion to remove item 4A from the table, and that is parking information page for the city's website. Do I have a motion to remove it from the table? Chief, do I have a second? All second. Okay. Um, all in favor of removing it from the table? Discussion? Oh, sorry. Yeah. First, get the vote on removing it from the table. If it doesn't get removed from the table, it's not. Oh, yeah, that's right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so parking information page for the city's website. Uh, I know I had suggested in the email that we, uh, again, table this indefinitely because it is not something that is incredibly time sensitive and it is something that we can revisit once uh, more details are available to debate. Uh, do I have a motion to table this indefinitely? I'll make a motion. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, roll call, uh, Johnny. I feel a split decision on this one just because I don't feel like I've been informed enough yet. Being here at my first meeting. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so the city does plan to have a parking information page for the city's website that will include um, eventually permitting information, time to parking <coughs> information, um, if the paid parking system is implemented, how it works, what the apps are that you can use, what the different zones are, what the rules are, enforcement hours. Pretty much anybody would want to know if they were visiting the city and wanted to know where, when, and how they could park. Does the city have one now? Uh, we have one queued up, but I don't believe it has been made live yet. My concern is that I think that people, citizens need to know when and where they can park. Mm -hmm. And so um, not having an information page basically is not providing them with the information that they need to know, mm -hmm. you know what's going on right now. Right, what's going on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you have the information page, just... Um, Snow bands, and I can throw that up there when it's. I mean, that's just something, another source for people to look at besides Jim. That, that's always put on the city. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's up there on the larger city website. Uh, yeah, but how many, you know, when you can park? I mean, one of the things that came up at the last meeting was whether or not we were going to let people know that they were only enforcing between 8 and 4 p.m. Right. And, you know, again, I, I, think that's, I think that's wrong. I think the public needs to know when they're going to be enforced, where, where they can park, and when they can park there. I agree with Marianne on that point. Um, we were the ones who voted against that. Um, but I, I think if we go forward with the information page, all I would say now is that you can park for two hours on this spot, 30 minutes on this spot. And technically, if um, the hours of operation for that uh, for our parking enforcement officer change, or if the city were to hire other parking enforcement officers, they could give you that ticket at 2 a.m. because uh, I, I think uh, they could give you that ticket after 4 p.m. if she decides to work late one day because we didn't vote on ending the parking at a certain time. Plus, there's you know there's history here though. Okay, so this known parking thing is is pretty new. This was this was really always before if you parked on one side of the street and then moved it to the other side of the street, you were safe, but now you're not. And I think people have a right to know that. Okay, I, that's a good thing to put on the website. Yeah. Well, since we have the uh, at least the basics queued up, um, why don't we make a motion to create a basic web page with information that we have available? Uh, we got the downtown parking map back from the graphic designer, which pretty clearly, uh, I think you guys have seen it, shows what the different time limits are at different parts of the city. Um, so why don't we have a motion to create the page and to add that map and then anything else that we feel is appropriate at this time for public awareness of the parking situation. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. All right, item five, finalizing regular times for parking committee meetings. Uh, whereas the results of the scheduling availability poll completed by the committee members indicated Tuesday evenings at six o'clock to be a convenient time for the highest number of members. 
Resolve that the PPAC will meet on the second Tuesday of each month at 6 p.m. in the Common Council Chambers unless otherwise agreed upon by the committee. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, discussion? I do think having a set time is good because with the doodle thing, right after the last meeting, I was asked by people once our next meeting, I wasn't sure. The doodle was kind of a half hearted attempt. It only allowed you to see your choice. It didn't allow you to see anybody else's. It's not know. like, yeah, but I mean, all I'm saying is it was less than open. Sorry, but. No, that was, was my fault. That was It was on purpose. And uh, so if you want to have it on a set time, fine. It's fine with me, but the first go around was not good. I've been on a lot of committees. It worked well. So it's not like we're a deliberative body here that affects anybody's lives because all we do is make recommendations. Uh, any further discussion? Um, let's have a roll call. John? Yes. 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 Mm. No. Yes. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right, item number six, implementation of a paid parking system. <clears throat> Whereas the downtown parking study completed by Carl Walker indicated that a paid parking system accomplishes two objectives. One, it creates a high level of customer service by offering options to patrons based on price, not on enforcement, and provides funding necessary to adequately administer a public parking program. And whereas the Plattsburgh Common Council at its regular meeting on October 18th, 2018, passed a resolution stating the Common Council supports the transition to a paid parking system within the city's downtown district which shall rely on technological solutions, and whereas the city is unable to absorb the overhead of a managed parking system that does not generate revenue, and whereas the city has expended significant financial resources toward the creation of additional parking capacity downtown to replace the expected loss of public parking on the Durkee Street lot, and that the cost of these expenditures is intended to be paid by user fees generated by the parking system, Resolved, the PPAC recommends that appropriate steps be taken by the city to implement a paid parking system in the downtown district, and it is further resolved. It is recommended that a request for proposals be drafted detailing the city's requirements for a paid system. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Chief? Uh, discussion? So a paid parking system can take many different forms. I mean, a permit system. Mm -hmm. So when we say um, get a resolve that the PPAC recommends that the appropriate steps be taken by the city to implement a paid parking system and request for proposals, um, would that be of a specific kind of parking system? It'd be one that was based on, as the council said, technological solutions. So something based either on meters or a kiosk-based system. Kiosk by preference simply because of the upfront capital outlays that are involved with buying meters for each individual space. Kiosks are far more cost effective. But it can, as you said, take many forms. Um, a strictly permit-based system has its limitations, especially for visitors who are coming downtown not on any regular basis. Uh, it doesn't really afford them an option for parking, whether it's you know a daily permit, which is inconvenient for somebody who only comes downtown on a infrequent basis so a paid system with uh, you know a kiosk every for every couple dozen spots or every dozen spots offers a lot of versatility a lot of flexibility uh, offers this committee a lot of analytical capability when we are looking to see whether the rates being charged on a certain street are too low or too high or whether parking spots are being effectively utilized on one street versus another, uh, so we can make objective judgments on the recommendations we're making to the council, you know, whether to raise rates, whether to lower them, whether to expand enforcement hours, whether to constrain them. And it also allows for very quick and very inexpensive changes to that system. We had discussed earlier tonight the possibility of changing the 30 minute and 10 minute parking spaces to one hour that requires DPW staff to physically go out and remove those signs. Uh, if the committee sees that 
changes need to be made with a kiosk system. It's a simple reprogramming of the system and everything takes effect immediately and it's simply a matter of making the public aware of those changes so they know what they are before they come downtown to park. Important to note too that this doesn't mean we're buying the kiosks. This is this RFP is to get bids and proposals of different firms and companies offering different technological solutions, which we will then have to incorporate. We'll be like, hey, let's say a key, if Matt says like a kiosk or it's at X amount of thousand dollars per unit, and that's something that we can consider as a committee um, as we make further plans. But it's just it's a process. The RFP process could take multiple months. And in that time period, we can still have our internal debates about times, rates, and everything else that we're talking about. This is just to get more information on if we, what kiosk systems are available at what prices and what technology, what other solutions or software they can provide to give us more information to make better judgment calls down the line. Yeah. And whether those systems will integrate successfully with the ticketing system that the police department currently uses, which is called Complus. Um, it's our understanding that most of the systems out there will do that, but that's an important consideration, so that's not one more thing that we have to reinvent the wheel on. So will these kiosks um, let the city know that a ticket should be issued because somebody spent more time and didn't pay for it? Yeah, generally the way it works is um, with a kiosk system, the city will be divided into zones, you know, like a four-digit designation, and that will cover two yeah. blocks. Uh, so you'll park there um, if you Type have a number, you get a credit card. Yeah. Yep, and so the uh, the person who is doing the parking enforcement can see on their handheld set that this license plate has paid for such and such so many hours in this zone. And if they see a license plate that does not appear on their list, then that person gets a ticket. But again, that's that is requiring manpower. I'm just wondering if there isn't a system that will say, you've paid for two hours, your time is up. I mean, I know in DC, when your time is up, they send you a ping. Mm -hmm. And if you don't go and put more money in the meter or, or you know, get back online and tell them, you're, you can expect a ticket in the mail. Oh yeah, and that's an option that we can consider as a committee. I, I certainly wouldn't want to commit to that before you know, further conversation. And Mr. Brown points out, and I think it's a good, a good point, that um, if a parking system is implemented that is a paid system, we should have some way of allowing people to drop things off, pick things up, you know, maybe in 10 minutes of free parking before uh, it goes into effect. Something that allows people to just do quick stops and things like that. Sure. We could do the two hours like it is on the show. I would argue for two hours. Um, or we could do 15 yeah. minutes, you could do 30 minutes, and that's kind of what the data would help us with that. Most people are getting tickets at, you know, say we do 10 minutes free parking, a bunch of people are getting tickets. But, but physically, it's impossible for the parking person to, to do rounds fast enough to catch people who are there for more than 10 minutes. Just like, you know, it's frequently impossible for them to catch people who are there for more than two hours. And the damage is going to be done with public image. You know, in my business, we think a lot about obstacles to care. Mm -hmm. um, the things that keep people from coming in to your business. One is there's no parking. One is they don't like your receptionist. You know, another might be the, the chairs in the waiting area aren't comfortable. You know, there's all these factors. And parking is a huge one. And if all of a sudden my patients who are popping in for a quick adjustment have to pay to park where they're not used to, there's gonna be a huge shift. Because there's nothing downtown that people can't get elsewhere. And so the public perception, I'm already having people come in going, are you going to move your office? What do you think is going to happen? You know, there's a lot to be said for the, the, the people who live there. How, are, how is it going to be negotiated for the apartments that are above my building? How is it going to be negotiated for restaurants? It's a huge, huge issue. And so I feel like, again, kind of to go back to what Dave said, we're really stuck, again, with sort of the... the it's already been put in motion. It's pretty determined. Right, and do we have the option to say, you know, not at this time. It's really not a great idea. This isn't Burlington. Um, I'm not sure, I don't think it's a good idea. Well, I know I discussed this in the one email. Sure. Um, it is the role of the Common Council as the elected body of the city to set the direction for city policy. It's the traditional role of advisory committees to determine the most effective way to implement those policies. So the Common Council has made it their expressed wish that the city pursue a paid parking system. 
So it falls to this committee to determine the best way to implement a system such as that uh, that does the least, well, does the most amount of good for the city without causing undue harm to downtown residents and businesses. But if we, we recommend no paid parking, what are they going to do? They're going to do it anyway, right? Right. Perhaps. Exactly. So why no, are we here? Advice. We've got no power. Why, All we're doing is making recommendations. Yeah, and the recommendations are predetermined yes. based upon what the Common Council has already decided. Okay. So basically, where'd you take the flack for the decision they've already made? Sorry. The decision to get rid of the Dirty Street parking lot was made over three years ago. Where the what parking lot? Yeah. The Dirty Street parking lot. So, I mean, if you want to sit here and complain about that, we can, but that's been a discussion that's been going on for over three years. Yeah, so the Amazon. Well, well the manner in getting rid of it. The committee is here to establish, all right, with those 289 parking spots, what was the best way to do it? If you don't think that paid parking is the best way to go about replacing those parkings, and maybe if we you look through all these um, ideas, and the Common Council might look at that and say, maybe we, we should try it. I think that would be catastrophic with the state and other things and a lot of other discussions that is far outside of the purview and the expertise of this committee. But if we don't pursue these really, really ideas, because the, the council has put forth, hey, it's the number one thing in the parking study put forth by an expert that paid parking, or at least a managed parking system, however you set it up, whether it's two hours free parking, which is, heck, if you have two hours free parking, and then uh, incremental uh, paid parking system. That's probably better than what you have now. Then you don't have to move your thing out of the zone now. But if, so if we say we don't want to pursue that, then I, I would imagine that the council would see us as just flaunting our duties and then have to walk away the duties would have to step up and do it themselves. But the council doesn't have the wherewithal to meet and discuss parking all the time. That's kind of our idea. Uh, that's kind of our purpose to sit here and discuss how each little individual choice can be implemented. Um, like Matt said, the overall strategy, sure, that, that'll be held by the council, but as far as 15 minutes free, 30 minutes free, should we go with this RFP? Should we go with that RFP? Like you said, that should we go with the RFP that has to have uh, someone from the police department go around and put a ticket on the window, or should we go with an RFP? Uh, like Marianne said, that will mail the ticket automatically uh, to that person. That is the kind of stuff that the council is is certainly going to listen to the public advisory committee. Oh, and we understand that if, 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 if the, the situation is recommendations, okay? But you have to understand the kind of feedback that we are getting from yeah. the community at large, and it's not good. We get it. You know, it isn't good. So the council we're, we're going to voice what we are what we are, uh, what we consider our constituents to be, who are the sure. city businesses, the city citizens, the people who live here and have to park here, our tenants, you know, we're gonna voice those things. We will certainly, of course, try to help you, you know, make recommendations and things of that nature. But, you know, it, 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 our role is so severely limited in that. Yes. Exactly. That, that sometimes it, it seems that, um, uh, you know, that the council's the puppeteer and we're the puppets and we're being led to a conclusion that that they want us to make. Well, the, the conclusion's already been made. It was made three years ago. The best way is to decide how to implement a system that handles this. Well, the conclusion was made three years ago, granted. But the deal isn't signed. A lot hasn't been sold. There are still options out there. And we have a parking lot down by the Naked Turtle that never saw the investment that we put into it. And I think everybody who lives in the city and pays taxes, and I'm saying pays taxes, we're not talking about you know, people who are you know, uh, living outside the city and, and, and don't have a stake in this. All of us are concerned about those issues because we've seen the city do this before. Mr. Merkel here has seen this whole issue come up over and over and over again over the last, I'm going to be kind, 20 years. <laughs> <coughs> Anyway, we don't mean to be naysayers, but we are concerned about these issues. And you know, like I said, you will, we're help. We're, I, I think a per, permit parking and paid parking is definitely the way that we're going to have to go. But um, I think you're going to get a lot more backlash than you think. The council gets 
advice from people on both sides of this issue. And clearly when everyone's going to be coming to the parking committee, it's going to be about parking, and they're going to be the more parking, the better parking. And employers downtown, business owners downtown are always going to think there's not enough parking. People who come to buy stuff downtown are always going to think there's not enough parking. So right now, I mean, Chief, I don't know if you remember, but since they started giving tickets, there's more parking spaces downtown during the day. Good. You know, and, and people aren't parking overnight. I mean, I, I drive down to the off place here at 8, 7, 8 in the morning, and there's almost parking space anywhere, even in the little, the little lot. Well, so, and that's because of the tickets being issued. No, and I, I see that as encouraging because, I mean, there was quite a bit of concern and, and bordering on hysteria that we were going to restart uh, parking enforcement. And once we started it, it was a two or three week period of adjustment. People changed their habits and now it seems to be working far better than the old system. How's it going for you, Kate? Yeah, it's been great. Very good. I feel like there's plenty of parking yeah, um, now. I feel like there's always been plenty of parking. My concern is when the Jerky Street lot goes, goes away. Yeah, me too. My personal opinion is there will be more than enough parking if we do it right. People can disagree with that, but we're not going to get anywhere towards implementing an actual solution to this problem if on every agenda item we start arguing about the circumstances that necessitated the committee in the beginning. Yeah, we're, we're responding to a practical reality that is the impending development of the Durkee Street parking lot, and we're trying to figure out the best way to manage the city system in the wake of that development. If you look at it from parking, I, I understand it. If you want to have a, a discussion with that with me outside of the parking committee, I'm happy to discuss how I might think, even though I wasn't on the council when it was put forth, a $25 million investment in our downtown is a good thing for the city. And I'm sure you'll get a lot of people saying, I'll come out on both ways on that. Can I ask one question? Well, a little bit to do with the paid parking. Um, I find already that there's not enough disabled parking downtown or accessibility for disabled people downtown, including myself. Um, when I first moved here, I, mean, I, I do admit it's gotten a little better. But when I first moved here, I was going through rims like crazy because they didn't have the little ramps to get up on the sidewalk. Therefore, I was jumping curves. But with all this, are they going to implement a little more disabled parking and invite those people downtown to enjoy? Yeah, Johnny, that's, that's, well, that's exactly down. why you're on this committee, or exactly why. Um, so I'm a bomb? No, it's so why an advocate for, for uh, disabled uh, people with disabilities and that could, could be on this, because that's a very added point. Yeah. Um, I'm part of the. Uh, the DRI, streetscapes for improvements and curb cuts and stuff like that. So that's something as the parking gets implemented, this committee should definitely be discussing where to put uh, disabled parking, um, how much disabled parking uh, to put. So those are the kind of nitty gritty things that this committee really needs to discuss and make their um, recommendations to the council because the council is just not going to have those, can't have those in-depth discussions. A lot of these decisions are going to have to be made by this committee, and the council will listen to them. And I imagine that the council will defer to a lot of our suggestions. Um, how much, I can't say for sure. Um, but, um, but on certain things, they've made their expressed will very clear, and one of those issues is the implementation of a paid parking system. Well, I think if we're losing 289 parking spaces, <laughs> and if you read the parking study, there's a reason why it's number one that implementation of an overall managed parking system, because our parking system right now is wildly inefficient. And right now I think we have way too much parking downtown, is my own personal opinion. Um, that, uh, that it can be managed a lot better in a way that functions way more easily. And we, in heck, when we had our um, parking uh, committee, not parking committee, we had a parking forum. I want to say it was last fall sometime. And what you really heard there was, and then we got a lot of the, what well, Mary Ann's talking about, people disappointed with Dirk Street going away, but even the people that were complaining about that, when they talked longer, they were complaining a lot about Dirk Street's not even that good. Heck, I don't want to park right here to go to Iris's or to here. I want to park right in front of Iris's, and it's a big problem. And we had business owners coming in, Salve most prominently, um, was asking, like, why don't we enforce the current parking rules? This was before that happened on January 3rd, because they don't want to park in Dirty Street. 
I'm sure your clients don't want to park in Derby Street and walk all the way up to Brinker House Street. They want to park right on the street. A managed paid parking system aligns incentives with people's need for parking. So if I want to park in the Derby Street lot or I want to park down here and walk anywhere I want for free, then I can do that. But if I want to park right in front of her establishment, if I want to park right in front of the restaurant where I want to eat at, then I can hopefully, the parking system is efficient enough to make sure that there are parking spots close and I might have to pay for them. So that's kind of the point of uh, the paid parking system as I see it, to align incentives with people's needs. So can we back up for a second? You think there's too much parking downtown? <laughs> I think right now with the dirt street park, I that could very well be an argument made. I suppose any argument could be made, but I, I don't know what you're partaking of, but <laughs> you're wrong. Okay, I should be wrong. <laughs> I've been here a long time. I helped develop that lot. I helped get a building torn down to expand that lot, which I'm sorry I did now. But there's yeah. barely enough parking spaces here. Uh, and I, on peak times, I'm sure you'll get I mean, look at these photos right that somebody sent in during yeah. during a storm. I've seen the park. I get them sent to me every day. And trust me when I think about this, but just because we have an inefficient parking system right now, it's not set up well. It's set up as a free-for-all sort of parking system. <coughs> and I can tell you that based on some of the data that was gathered while the parking study was being put together, there were observations made <clears throat> of all the off-street lots in the downtown area at various times of the day, not on-street. This is strictly off-street lots, private and public. At a time when we weren't enforcing parking. At a time when we weren't enforcing parking. Right. But even at peak usage between all those private lots, there were over 250 spaces that were going unused. In Durkee? No, in all of the private lots put together, private and public but lots, Durkee included. In the private lots. Yeah, but private lots you can't count because private lots right. belong to the owners so they may or may lot. not be using them. That's their business. It's yeah. not yours. How many of the uh, parking spots on the Dirty Street lot on a busy day are people that have been parked there all day for maybe three days? Well, and where are those people going to go? As a, as a property owner who has apartments and pays a special assessment district tax, if I have a tenant that wants to keep their, park, their car parked, I'm paying for that. I'm not paying for the street. I'm paying for that. We I paid for the lot. I'm sorry, but you're Carol, not I'm sorry, but there will be a period for public comment at the end. I mean, that's, that was why we self-imposed this back in the 60s. Now, granted, I didn't do it, but oh, sure. related to people that, that did. And, that was the purpose for this. So I mean, it, it's a number that comes in a, a budget for the special assessment district. I mean, if you're gonna go to a paid parking system, I mean, get rid of the special assessment district. Get rid of our taxes on that. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's so a big you know, that's gonna part of the argument, yeah. That'll be, uh, these are discussions, we're not gonna do it right now. If we vote all yes, we're not gonna have a paid parking system tomorrow. The whole point is to recommend to the council that would pursue an RFP that gets us all these kind of ideas on what the best managed parking system would be. I think it's going to be a shell game, though, because I think the council wants to use that revenue to justify <coughs> paying for a structure or some other type of parking. I don't see you ever giving up that money. Okay. I believe in the... But you we should go back to the agenda. Resolution? <laughs> well, yeah, we can revisit that later. All right, uh, any further discussion on the implementation of a, a paid parking system? Just one quick thing, real sure. quick. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, using downtown is not all just going to irises. I think it needs to be important that that distinction be made. I have patients who have a hard time coming up with their $10 copay. Mm -hmm. And so the additional burden of, well, how much is parking going to cost is a big yes. issue. And there's plenty of people who are going to social services, who are going to law offices, who are going to other things that are not just eating out and using disposable income. And I think that really needs to be taken into consideration, that people are using the downtown for things that are not just recreational. They're important, and this is not a particularly economically you know, feasible thing for some people, that they just won't be able to come to downtown. But it's hard perhaps. to say that without, like, what if we had sure. three hours free parking? Right, absolutely. Well, I perhaps, agree. perhaps in conjunction with talking about permit parking, we could talk about giving business owners a certain number of permits so that, you know, they can give those to their clients, their patients, whatever, so that they can park for a period of time sure. and not 
not be subjected. Yeah, I don't know how that would work, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, but that's something yeah. that we can talk about in terms of the permitting system. I yeah, think. Sure. absolutely. That's something that needs to be discussed, really. Yeah, absolutely does. <coughs> so as far as this resolution that we're about to vote on, mm -hmm. um, the last line recommended that a request for a proposal be drafted. Will we be asked for input, or is this strictly council generated? This 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 is gonna be a decision that we can make. Um, so I, if we can come up with a draft RFP like that, we can discuss here as a group. Do we want? So you can bring it back to us. Yeah, we can have we can have it in the next meeting. We can mm -hmm. have it. We can okay. discuss it over email. We can just whatever it takes to get that information. So the, the RFP the won't go out okay. without us seeing it. Yes, of course. No, nope. you guys will definitely it's, be uh, okay. consulted before. We There's a couple of examples of draft RFPs that I put in the Dropbox. Yeah. Earlier today. <coughs> Which some of them are like 50 pages put together long, some basic language for what an RFP could look like yeah. for Plattsburgh. But again, you guys will obviously be consulted before we release it for uh, so we can talk to the, the public. Okay. Those details of if we do if, if we want to, if a kiosk system, do we want it to only be phone paid? And of course, I don't believe that it should be that. It should be cash and coin as well as credit card and phone mm -hmm. app. So those are the kind of details that we can work together with and set those mm -hmm. those parameters for what we expect out of whatever technology solution that we get. So, as a, as a group. I just add one more quick thing. I'm yeah, sure. Um, I also want to have noticed that since they did start enforcing um, the parking downtown for limited times, more and more people have actually been using the Jersey Street parking lot as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, didn't know if you guys noticed that either. Yeah, sure. and also um, Rodney said that the county employees use of the court street or not the court street the oak street parking lot has it's been a 180 i mean almost nobody used to park there and now it's full every day strictly because simply because we started enforcing the time limits as a employee though i obviously work at court a lot as does marianne and my wife works for the county and i can tell you when i would you know sometimes go drop her off at her car or something after lunch that old street parking lot was completely empty now it's completely full and i used to see people at five o'clock leave from working at the county office and go to their cars that were parked on the street all day. You don't see that anymore. So that's one of the things like um, our current enforcement of the parking system probably does get more efficient, although I still think it's a pretty inefficient program, making someone move out of a zone every two hours if they were willing to pay more to keep it parked there. My pet peeve is I pay for parking at the lot directly across from the government center. I pay for four spots. And I, half the time we can't use them because people from the government center are parked there. And they're not, you know, they're not, they don't want to tow everybody. They're kind of like, eh. Tow, tow. Well, the other issue you end up having too if you go down by the post office, a lot of postal workers park on the street. Mm -hmm. So it takes up a lot of the space. There's not, you know, when they shut down the, uh, the old finance building, they found their way to that parking lot. And then once we kick them out of there, they're back on the street. Well, try to plow the roads when it's full of postal workers' uh, personal vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's an issue. So where are we on the motion? Uh, I think if anybody wants any further discussion, we'll not. We'll have a roll call. Remind us what the motion is for. The motion is uh, the PPAC recommends that appropriate steps be taken by the city to implement a paid parking system in the downtown district, and it's further recommended that a RFP be drafted detailing the city's requirements for a paid system with the understanding that our, that RFP will be brought to the committee for consideration before it is released to the public. And that also includes the potentiality of a permit parking system. Uh, the permit system would probably be a separate issue from the paid system, um, but that's something that we have on item seven, and that will involve further discussion we have down the just road. Just wondering if the permit system is supposed to be paid to. Well, so I, this proposal is just. Item seven is a proposal for temporary. I, I think the permit system we're going to kind of want to look at after a paid parking system is, and the way I see it is kind of an exception to the paid parking right. system. Right. I would say that all paid parking systems have the provision for a permitting system, so it would be probably part of okay. anything that we're looking at. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's have a roll call. John? Aye. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion carries. Item seven, implementation of a daily permit system on a trial basis. 
Whereas section 253.3 of the city code authorizes the city planner to regulate traffic and parking in the city of Plattsburgh, including the powers granted by VTL 1640, and whereas VTL, that's vehicle and traffic law, 1640, subsection 15 authorizes the establishment, operation, policing, and supervision of a prepaid parking permit system. Parking time limits for such permits and the payment of fees applicable to parking where such a prepaid permit parking system is in operation. And whereas by resolution, the Common Council established a Plattsburgh Parking Advisory Committee comprised of stakeholders who guided by collected data, will research and evaluate potential options for the establishment operation enhancement and improvement to the city's parking system. And whereas the PPAC held its first meeting in January of 2019 and anticipates holding periodic meetings thereafter, and whereas there currently exists time limited on street parking in the city, of which the most kind, common time limit for on street parking is two hours. <coughs> and whereas in early January of 2019, the city enhanced its enforcement of the time limit restrictions for on street parking. And whereas the County of Clinton and other employers in the city have determined that they do not have sufficient off street parking, leading to their, to their employees and patrons parking on the street, potentially in excess of the posted time limits. And whereas, while the PPAC will continue to execute its mission and will provide well-studied recommendations to the Common Council, due to current off-street parking deficiencies of the County of Clinton and other employers, and in order to provide additional empirical data for the benefit of the PPAC, a data gathering short-term on-street parking permit trial program is recommended. Now, therefore, be it resolved that based on this report and recommendation, the city planner of the city planner, it is recommended that the following on-street parking permit trial program be established. Non-commercial vehicles with a valid, conspicuously displayed city parking permit may park in a two-hour time limit on-street parking zone between the hours of 6 a.m. and 2 a.m. A city parking permit shall be valid for a single day and in no circumstance shall it permit parking for more than 24 consecutive hours. City parking permits will cost, and this is something we'll discuss, certain number of dollars per permit and may be purchased through the finance department. Each city parking permit shall include the valid date and a license plate number of the vehicle. City parking permits are non-transferable. City parking permits do not exempt the permit holder from any parking restrictions other than time-based on-street parking restrictions. Permit holders must obey the signage for all other restrictions, including a snow emergency parking ban. Be it further resolved that all data generated by this on-street parking permit trial program should be collected and transmitted to the PPAC. And I will make one change yes. to this. Um, the change to, uh, currently it says, would allow any permit holder to park in a two hour time limit. Uh, the way that the report that was drawn up by the city planner is written and which um, the administration has signed off on would allow a permit holder to park in any time limited space that is listed for one hour or more, not just two hours. Yeah. Who's drafting these resolutions? Uh, well, some were drafted by the city attorney, some were drafted by myself. And some were drafted by Ethan. Uh, okay, do I have a motion on this? So moved. So moved, do I have a second? Yeah. Second, Chief? Discussion. I have a couple of comments. First yeah. of all, parking permits for residents, people who live in the downtown core area, mm -hmm. um, I think that a, a better time frame should be between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. There's no businesses that are open at that time. The only people that really need to be there are the people that live there. So and I don't think there should be a charge for those permits. I think that people who are actually living downtown should be able to get those permits as residents. That's what they do in Montreal. That's what they do in most major cities. Don't live there. You, you see me talking about what I was talking about, the exceptions to the day parking. Mm -hmm. Right now, anyone can do that because we all know she only works till 4. Uh, she works from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is sort of a, a, a temporary gap that the mayor had in this idea. I get it, but the way that it's drafted, 6 a.m. till 2 a.m. Um, is incredibly expansive. It's probably way more time than any one person with any kind of valid business downtown or any kind of, uh, you know, anything they need to do downtown should actually need. So 
it would make more sense to make it along business hours, you know, like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Let people pay for their employees or their clients or whoever they want to be able to park there, and then the rest of the time have it be for city residents. Sorry. Yes. It says that the, the permits are valid for 24 hours. So what do we do on Saturday and Sunday? Do we need a permit? How do we get one? Well, currently there's no parking enforcement on the weekend, so. Right. I mean, but there could be. Well, there could be. There could be. There could be. So this comes in because of people that, honestly, like you, Mary, have a hard time who, who just don't want to go out and or can't. This comes about possibly. because of the juror issue. What? This comes about because of the juror issue. Yeah. The juror issue yeah. was the number one thing. We have county employees constantly talking about. But you're going to give them permits anyway. Jurors get permits that say free parking wherever you want. Oh, that's not true. No, that's they not true. Not they the county, county gives them a permit. Yeah. They, get a, they get a permit that allows them to park in the county lot. The problem has arisen because the county, since, we, uh, since the city has been enforcing the on-street parking rules, the county employees have been parking in the county lots, and there's just not spaces in the county. So jurors have been parking on the street. I think they've been getting tickets. Well, let them not get tickets. Let the let so parking be that that parking be free. So that's oh. one. But what I'm saying is that first of all, if you're gonna if you're gonna sell the permits, you know, you need to sell them in a, a way that actually reflects the need for the permits. Mm -hmm. Six a.m. I, I mean, 24 hours is probably too much for permits that you're gonna sell. I mean, you should give free permits to the people who live there for overnight parking. No businesses are open, nothing's going on. And then during the day, if people want to purchase a permit for their employees or for themselves or whatever, um, you know, make it during hours that are more akin to what is actually going on downtown. And you're talking, I think you're talking about a permit system that, like I said, would be an exception when there is a set rules. This is sort of a temporary to fix it until we can get some uh, a parking system or whatever parking system. But, but what, what, what's that tied to? What's the rationale for that? Because 24-hour parking isn't necessary for 9 out of 10 people. Sure, it's necessary only for the people who live downtown, right? Well, let me say this. The mayor, when he presented this, was talking $3 a day. And I think the amount of people you're going to get buying it for $3 a day is very low. That's a very expensive. It works out to $90 a month if you're parking here every day. Um, and if you, if you prorate that out for a year, that's incredibly expensive. But again, you're missing my point. I'm not, I, I don't care about the cost. We're not even talking about cost right now. We're talking about if you're going to do that, if you're going to have permit parking, there should be, it should have some um, relationship to what is actually happening downtown. What is actually happening downtown is that between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., people come in, they work, they have you know, maybe they eat lunch, maybe they go to an office, maybe something like that. But the rest of the time, from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., or 8 p.m. until 6 a.m., people who live there should just be able to park. There's right no now. real competition. Well, yeah, currently they can. Just right. because of the enforcement hours, they're able to park during those hours without fear of ticketing. Well, at the well, moment. And you, this guys is didn't want to you guys didn't want to publicize what, I'm, I'm not saying well, you guys, I'm just yeah. saying nobody wanted to publicize what hours we are going to enforce. So I'm just right. saying, make it a fair system, make it a system that everybody knows about, um, you know, and take it from there. Sure. And this is crafted as, again, a trial program. The one reason is because the city in all of our research, aside from handicapped parking permits, we found no instance in which the city has in the past issued resident or employee parking permits. So from an administrative standpoint, we need a small program in order to work out how it is going to work, how much it's going to cost, how it is going to be administered, how records are going to be kept, how it's going to be presented to the committee so it's in a digestible form. Um, the, why 6 a.m. to 2 a.m.? Well, I think you have businesses. Because those are where you can't park. If there's a, those are where you can't park <coughs> in the city streets between, uh, is my guess, I, I didn't draft this, between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. if there's a parking there. So. I believe that was the rationale. That's, that's the, only, that's the downtown that's, business. But district. that's the exception rather than the rule. Yes. Okay, the parking ban situation is the emergency situation. But I can see the situation coming up where someone's like, hey, I bought a parking pass for a day. Can't give me a ticket, even though the parking ban 
Oh, so we have a disclaimer. When the amber lights are on, it just the not, permit's not void. Yeah. But even the, even the parking ban for the city is even loosened downtown. When we put the downtown lights on, it's actually from it's from it's two, actually two in the morning to six a.m. We give, we give the, the bar business uh, an extra two hours. Okay, and well, we're it's talking apples and oranges because I'm thinking about even though it's a temporary basis, what is the most convenient and the most rational solution to giving these parking permits? given the use of the city on a regular basis. I'm not thinking in terms of just snow bans, because those happen relatively infrequently. I don't think this whole system's gonna be pretty infrequent, though. I think, it, like, say it's $3. I don't think you're gonna get many people coming down to the finance office and getting it. You know, I think the only people who will are people like a juror who has to be here all day, or someone who's coming into town and wants, and knows they have to park on the street all day and doesn't want then to. Then just enforce your two-hour parking. It doesn't really address what, what the residents need. It doesn't address what the businesses need. It addresses people who don't want to bother moving their car all day. Exactly. Yeah. Which is kind Which of there's a lot of people that don't. I yeah, mean, there there's a lot of people that say there to are, me, but I'm already paying why for can't parking. I get a permit? <laughs> yeah, well, right. I'm I mean, paying for parking in two yeah. places. So. No, but you, I, I can tell you that um, people come up to me in court, and I, I don't really know how I feel about this proposal. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like trying to advocate for it. I guess all I'm saying is that I don't, I don't think the proposal in and of itself is wrong. I think it's a good proposal in some respects. But the times don't make any sense to me in terms of the usage in the city and, and who is likely to need permits. You know, so let's tie it to something rational other than the emergency snow that happens five to ten times a year. And when I say it's a broad fix for people that come in and like, why can't I get a permit? I knew I would have to be parked here all day. I'm a juror and doing a trial, and, you know, or I'm a, uh, I had to come and I knew I was going to spend all day. Can't I just buy something for three dollars and make sure I don't get this fifteen dollar ticket when I don't move my car? Yeah. Uh, Why make it for twenty four hours? Well, you have no not, reason right? to be downtown for twenty four hours unless you live there. No, but I don't know that's what people do or what. Like people if I bought a parking permit, I would want it for the max amount of time. I think that's what the the idea behind it was. You make a valid point that it really is only for a finite amount of time, but yeah, We're talking is, only on street parking, correct? Yes. Only on street, yeah. Well, the, the two 60 hours. minutes or more. The two, there is on the next to Olive Ridley's, and there's the two parking lots besides Durkee and the Broad Street. Um, they are two hour limits. Oh, so that right. would allow people to park there for longer than two hours. So you're hours. saying those lots would be permitted lots? But they would be covered under the two hours. The but it says on street. Oh, here. on street. I apologize. I take that back. So is this something I that's coming next? Okay, so wait a minute. That's only off street parking? That's on street so parking. All we're talking street. about. Yeah. Why well, can't you keep on street parking the way it is right now? You have enforcement. There's a lot of space in downtown. On the street to park. So get a, a permit. $3 a day when I know I run the finance every day and get a permit. I don't think many people would. Yeah. Well, it's the only part of the trial. You know you have to park that. What's the point of the trial? Because ultimately there are people that want permits, like resident permits. Right. And if we have something to gauge its effectiveness, or it, like, should it be free? But make it the, be resident <coughs> permits that make sense. So is, permits, correct me if I'm wrong, resident days. permits require a change to law. And resident permits require action by the state legislature so to allow the city to issue them. We're talking about anyone could go to yes. the finance department any day and say, look, I know I'm gonna have to be parked on the street for more than two hours. Don't want a fifteen dollar ticket. Can I get a parking permit for three dollars? Five. However much we set it for. It's, it's just a stopgap provision. And what I think what the chief's pointing out is it also gives us, a, and it's definitely a very broad, um, very like, you know, doing surgery with a broadsword or something like that uh, motion. But it, it satisfies those people who know they're going to be parked and don't want to get a ticket and park on the street. And it does allow us to gather some data. And it also fosters, again, going back to cooperation with the county, uh, as the chief said that this issue was first raised by the problem of jurors getting tickets downtown. Um, so if the county wants to allow their jurors to park on city streets without fear of ticketing, they can buy large amounts of these permits and issue them to any of the jurors who ask for them. And that also prevents the city, that also prevents the city from treating one set of parkers any differently than another. 
Understood. But again, 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. What, what's the point of that? It's a catch-all. Yeah, but why, why not limit it, make it a little more reasonable to what the purpose is, and, and allow the people who are residents to have free permits overnight? But I think you're kind of jumping in and guessing what the purpose is. We don't know what the purpose people have. But why 6 a.m. to 2 a.m.? That's what I'm saying. Why not? It makes no sense. Why not? Okay. So some bureaucrat decided 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. is a reasonable period to park downtown? It's not a reasonable uh, period. It's the amount we'll charge an arm and a leg for if you want to get out of the park. For three system. bucks? Three bucks is quite expensive. I don't think you're going to get many people doing this. We don't want people doing this. This is a, uh, like I said, I don't even, I feel like I'm, I just, feel like, it's about, I just feel like it's an arbitrary time, so I don't understand the rationale for it. So you would like to make a motion to adjust the time? I would make a motion to okay. adjust the time. All right. Here we go. See, I think it's for a full day, but they were like, someone asked probably, well, does this give them, because right now this is a permit to get out of all the city's parking rules as, as far as the time on the street. And so I feel like someone probably asked, well, what about if the lights are shining? This does specifically pointed out that someone could go in and people don't always have the, enough information. No matter how much you post it, you can post it on flyers, you can post it on the website. If people don't read it, someone will go in and they will buy a pass and then they'll be like, hey, it's a full day. I think originally it was probably 24 hours. It's a full day and I can park for 24 hours and then it starts snowing or something. And so then how do you answer the streets if everybody has well, parking? Well, and that, and that, is, that is the out. problem is education because the lights will go on, and even though you can put it on paper, right. people don't read very well. People and, will come, I, I can imagine. I can and, imagine. and there will be, and the chief and I will have to work it out where people will get ticketed and towed, and, they, and their excuse will be, well, I bought that pass on finance. Well, I, I would think a motion to amend it to six, uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you know, a 12 hour, hour period that encompasses when most people are downtown eating and doing whatever. Well, if that guy who had thought of wants to come in, then right. has to be in. Then he's got two hours to park there. And nobody's enforcing it anyway, so who cares? That's true. All right, so we have a motion to amend the hours to which a permit will apply. Do I have a second? Yeah. Dave? Uh, discussion on the amendment. What did you say, Marianne? <laughs> <laughs> it took a long time to get to the amendment. Just, I'm really sorry. This isn't gonna, this isn't direct to the amendment, but I think we'd have a much better response if you could buy these permits online. If there was some quick form, I don't know how crazy that, that is. That'd be great. That'd yeah. be great. <laughs> this is why I don't know, I don't know how. So we can fix the problem. Yeah. It's, it's really not, we, I, I, I imagine, and uh, I haven't really been involved in these discussions, but I imagine that we don't really want people doing it. And unfortunately, at this point, the no, city's seriously. IT infrastructure <laughs> isn't set up to allow for that, but that is certainly well, something. So, so, you know, I mean, it, it didn't have to be in a permit system. Yeah, I think when we do find a permit system, that should be yeah, the yeah. This yeah. is kind of just like. Because yeah. I just, I don't think we'll get any response from this. I think if it lasts a month, it lasts two months, it could just last to the next step where we're in, then we can make a recommendation to the council. It may be a complete disaster. It was just a, you had people complain that they. I'd like to buy a day pass if I know I'm going to get a $15 parking ticket. I have one more, one more monkey wrench, and that's the non-transferable thing. Because frankly, I would buy a month's worth of passes if I could give them to clients. If I could say, okay, my client is coming in. Yeah. I thought about that when you said about the county buying them for the jury. Yeah. yeah, and that's something we had asked the city attorney about today. Yeah. Um, whether the county buying books and then handing them out to jurors yeah. constitutes a non-transferable. Um, his position was that the PPAC could add clarifying language to this, uh, what form that would take. But if there's a will here that people should be able to buy tickets for customers and things like that, and then hand them out later, if PPAC agrees that that is something that they want, we could certainly ask him to build language for that into the council resolution. Because if you get like a book of parking permits that has you know a number on it or something, and you know that it's been paid for. Well, yeah. I mean, you made the point like, why not a monthly permit? Is that mm -hmm. something that could be discussed? Right. Yeah. Instead well, of getting thirty. Yeah. Oh yeah, they have to. Right. Yeah, like, this is an incremental step to, to a much this larger this discussion. For, and maybe it's not. Okay, so uh, any further discussion on Marianne's motion to amend the hours? 
It's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 8 to 8? I'd say 8 to 8. Okay. It's most reasonable. Um, let's have a roll call on the amendment. John? Yes. Aye. 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 Yes. 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 No. Yes. No. Okay, the amendment passes. <clears throat> um, the other item for discussion is if we are issuing daily permits, how much does the committee think they should cost? Yeah, before this goes to a vote, I think you need to make an amendment to add a cost. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, I'll make an amendment to add. What? Maybe we should have discussion on what <laughs> yeah, let's have a discussion on what we think the cost should be. Well, I think the three dollars a day really, you know, like you say, save fifteen dollars. Um, however, if you're going to do that for an extended period of time, why not give discounted rates? So you know, okay, so it's going to cost you, say, three dollars a day times thirty days. Okay, well, what if we take some of that off? You know what I mean? Like work fifty dollars a month, three dollars a day if they're okay, single. Yeah, days, make it reasonable. Like that. Uh, a day for 30 days, and that's all you got. I, I think the idea of this is the same. Yeah. It should be rare. We, we're not trying to sell people, uh, at, at least I, my vision of it was that you wouldn't be trying to sell people permits. Because oh. that's going to come up later. It's just, I mean, you're talking about like selling the county like whole books of these things. You know, I mean, is there going to be any type of discount rate for those? Or are they going to, the county's going to fork over all this money for? Uh, this parking that that's my concern. The county's been pretty adamant. Once again, I'm not going to speak for Rodney and the whole county, but our discussions with the representatives, they do not want specifically jurors to pay for parking in any capacity, and they're willing to work with the city for whatever we set prices is and any other financial contributions to address that issue. So their concern with these these temporary and why they would buy a, a book wouldn't be for their employees as much as it would be for that juror issue that they have, that they consider a very big issue. So, right, but I, that, I yeah. was just throwing out yeah. there. No, I get, yeah. <laughs> so they're also considering tr them to be transferable. They're getting a book then. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, so I think that needs to be part of the motion. Are the jurors using the Oak Street lot? I know this is a bigger picture than above our pay grade here, but well, so the, the money used the right now, the income yeah. that you showed us for well, January, it shouldn't be to that goes to what, general fund? The fund yeah, all tickets go to the general fund. So that's where this money's been going? That's where that money's been going. Any parking revenue from a paid system would be set up in a different fashion that would be so set aside. So what I'm saying is for the offsets for parking permits are going to decrease these numbers. Oh, okay. So the revenue collected from ticketing. So the revenue that is gained from permits is going into a parking fund. This revenue is not is uh, going to decrease as a result of that so but we don't have to worry about that and that's because one the of the parking person the per the person enforcing the parking is coming out of the police budget it's not coming out of the parking fund budget yes the parking enforcement officer is paid out of the pd Correct. budget okay and one of the things about uh, the committee's deliberations is if we set a certain daily cost per permit after a month, we can take a look at the number of permits sold, the amount of revenue brought in, versus any fluctuation in the ticketing revenue and whether there's any correlation there. And if the committee feels that if there is a huge drop off in ticketing revenue and we're not bringing in nearly enough in permit costs, we can have a discussion about raising those permit rates. Okay, Michael. Our job is not to balance his budget though. No. <laughs> no, but it is to take a look at the revenue and costs associated with the system. I think we want to use caution. I know we talked about discounting uh, the rates. The, obviously, the more you buy, the, uh, the more the discount. But the county needs to uh, encourage the jurors and the employees to use the lots that aren't that quite, quite that convenient, the Oak Street lot. And I think that if we start forking over books of tickets at a discounted rate to the county, it's much easier to find that on-street spot and then the small business owners obviously will not have those parking spaces yeah that's a good point so i you know i think that you 
want to want to be careful about discounting um, yeah. to the county or discounting to to anyone for that that matter. I think it needs to be fair and even. I agree. The the point of this is not to uh, yeah exactly. This is not to change the enforcement. No, and, and if anything, we want to try to encourage the jurors, the county employees to utilize the county owned lots and get them off the streets. I mean, it's nice. I mean, it, you can drive down, like the guys, you know, the enforcement, one, one enforcement officer has done amazing things. I mean, just imagine if that enforcement was even tighter. I mean, I know she's pretty diligent about her job. But, but she's only one person. But she's right. one person. Right. And you can drive through downtown and very easily park in the middle of the day, you find a parking space yep. almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. So if you start putting those out there and you're going to get out of town people coming in and parking full days on the city streets as opposed to parking in a county lot, I think we're going to have a problem. I think $3 a day is very reasonable. $3 a day? Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you brought that back to the But day. I do want some, <laughs> I, but I, I would like to suggest that we have some kind of, um, that they be transferable. They can buy a book or something or a parking thing for a month so that you know for people who do run businesses and stuff and you know don't want their people who maybe have back problems or walking problems they there should be something not them. even a book of them like right. you should get by like five of them or something like that or that are laminated or something and right. when your clients come tell exactly. them to put it in their windshield and make sure you get it back when they leave right i pay for that so that that's I think that's the point Mike was making. This right. isn't supposed to right. provide an end around to the to yeah. park. No, it's like supposed to it's make for, parking available for, for rare, the people. Rare events. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you can keep an client in your office for two hours yeah. and actually get them to pay for two hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You won't mind paying for that. <laughs> i got to put those suckers out. <laughs> All right, so Marianne made a motion uh, that the permits cost $3 per day and that language be added uh, in consultation with the city's attorney that accommodations for transferring them from employees to employers and we can have that discussion with him later be added to it. Uh, do I have a second, second for that? John, uh, discussion on that motion? Wait, that's one motion, two things? Yeah, we combine them. Okay. Yeah, we combine them. Okay, uh, we'll have a roll call, John. Uh, this is just on the motion. This is just yes. on the motion, yeah, yes. the amendment, yeah. Yes. 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 Yep. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, any further discussion on the whole motion? So one quick question. I don't mean for this to sound uh, but as far as anybody with a disabled pass, they're going to need it for access to disabled parking. But is there going to be something impl implemented with this um, paint parking system where there's going to be enough reasonable space for disabled people to be able to park and use their permits? I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm just say that one more time. Okay, let me see if I can remember all that one more time. <laughs> so this paint parking system that you're taking with the permits Okay, a mm. disabled permit is able to park in a disabled spot, happy to have that permit, unless they early could get ticketed. However, with this paid parking system, are there going to be spots implemented for disabled people to be able to park and use their permit to be able to get closer access to certain uh, businesses like restaurants, things like that? Wait, Charlie, mm -hmm. uh, uh, disabled parking spots, is there a time limit on them? I don't think so, but there could be one created, I think. The real issue is that I don't think downtown has a lot of curb cuts and other things that's for it. They don't have, you know, you don't see a lot of handicap signs, and that's because they don't have curb cuts and they don't have those other things. I, I don't know for sure, but does anybody have any, any idea how many there were or are? I don't think there are hardly any. I don't think downtown there are any on-street no. specific handicap spaces. No, I believe that's governed by local statute, but we would have to do a little more research to find out. I think by state statute, you're required to have a certain number. There used to be one yes, in, front in of all street parking lots. That's a state statute. There was never one in front of my office. There was, there was one. 
Well, that's when no, Louis McConey was, was there. It was totally, totally political. There was never a curb cut. No, no, but there Louis was had one, a sign. And then they took it away when Louis passed away. Yes. And when I bought the building and Judge Wiley was there, they put it back up. At his oh, request. So but I know there was, it was one there. It was only there so long as I had oh. a heavy head person in my office. All right, so John, we can look into uh, the details for on-street versus off-street regulations, whether it's state or local control, and talk about that at the next meeting. Right. Yeah. I think okay. the, yeah, the, the paid parking, uh, obviously the sign, the signage throughout the whole city is going to change, uh, and that's going to have to go hand-in-hand -hand with these, if you go with a kiosk-based system. Yeah. Um, yep. Everything's coming down. coming down. With zones, maybe we won't have to have so many signs? That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's such a thing as too much of a yeah. thing. Yeah. Hence the other DRI project. Okay, any further discussion on the motion on the table? Or the resolution on the table? Okay. Um, one more roll call, John? Yes. 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 Dave? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, do I have a, I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, the time when the public is invited to come and speak to the committee on any subject relating to parking. Well, I'm Bill Badger, I'm a county employee over at the government center. I just, I don't, I'm not here to ask, but I know you've been in discussion with Rodney. The uh, paperwork they give out now to employees for parking over there, on the bottom of the first page, it said about the county enforcing the laws over there. I think about 15 years ago, that was a, there was a, an arrangement made with the county to have them go, or for the city to go enforce the county lots parking. Is, that, is there any discussion about that maybe happening again? Uh, we haven't had any discussions about that particular issue. Because I'm thinking, because I've been talking with Rodney right now, when I go, I park over in Oak Street mostly, because that's one, by the time I get there, that's one spot available. And I see a lot of cars without the county parking sticker in the window, but that doesn't mean they're not county employees because it's never been enforced. There's never no been enforcement in there for 15 years. I You're saying there was an agreement uh, for the city to enforce in the county owned lots? Correct. Because I have a coworker of mine who told me several years ago, he worked over at D D Durkee Street, went over to the government center to go to the Treasury Department, parked there, and got a city ticket from the city, but got it taken away because he showed he was a county employee. But he didn't have, have a permit because he wasn't at that complex. Okay. So I, I've talked with Rodney, because right now, there, I'm sure there's county people to park there, they don't have the sticker in the window. So to identify whether they're a county employee or not right now is going to be difficult because not everybody has the sticker they're supposed to have in the window. But there's been nobody enforcing it either. Right, so they just stopped issuing them. Well, they haven't stopped issuing them. Just people that when they get hired don't go to both gotcha. buildings and grounds to get one because whether they have it or not. Uh, so I know some of my uh, coworkers said they think some of the non-county employees are parking a lot but how to identify it that now without everybody getting a sticker and, not, and nobody patrolling it i would just say sir though that a lot of people people who are going to cheat in parking are going to do it in the oak street lot they're going to well, no, i know i know that but <laughs> they're going to do it in the lot i'm paying yeah. for and I mean, i'm not naive enough to say i know I've, I've seen some of my people work in my building and i tell them i said well there's plenty of spots over in oak street to park mm -hmm. they just don't go over there to see it but right now there's no way to uh, enforce it because people that are supposed to have stickers that are probably county employees that are parking there, they don't get them because it's, whether they have it or not, it's no big deal because nobody's over there patrolling the lots. Is there a cost to you as an to no, get the okay. there isn't. There's no cost. I just know at one time there was an agreement that prior to me working for the county uh, that they well, had. I know my with wife the works at SUNY and she has to buy her parking. Yeah, there's, there's no cost, no. It's just that uh, what people are supposed to do. When they get hired, I, I mean, I've been in discussion with the clerk at Building from Grounds, and I had her send me the paperwork to show, and uh, and I think maybe they're trying to tighten up because in uh, the department I'm in, they just recently sent out a list to all the employees that please review your list to make sure that your your vehicle is identified properly and the parking sticker that you have is the one that's in your window. So maybe it is in the process of trying to. But right now. It would be the county sheriff would have to patrol a lot because it's not a city parking lot. So. 
Yeah, I just didn't know if there's any discussion. Uh, not yet, but we can yeah. certainly discuss it with Rodney. Okay. <coughs> uh, any other comments from members of the public? Everybody knows me. Um, I got a little frustrated through this meeting, and I think if other <coughs> residents were here, they would be a little frustrated. One of my biggest concerns right now in hearing this meeting is, is that in order to revitalize downtown and in order to get more people to downtown businesses to frequent your shop and you know other things that are happening hopefully in the future, we really do need to let this development go forward. And Every time I, I hear disgruntled, you know, um, business people that own businesses downtown and um, discourage um, or express their concern of having things go forward and losing the parking, I feel like I'm almost as old as Mr. Merkel and I've been here all my life and uh, other than living in Montreal for seven years. And every time we make a step forward, we go 10 steps backward. And I just encourage the committee to work positively on developing uh, a managed parking plan that everybody will benefit from. There's gonna be changes and nobody's gonna be happy. I live on Couch Street and I have tenants that struggle with the snow ban and thank God, you know, I'm creative and I work out ways to move cars in my own little driveway. But we really need to work on a plan, I think that our snow plan um, that we have in place um, is one of the best that I've ever seen. And we need to work with people like you that have tenants above you. And um, one thing that a lot of cities do, Kate, is that they have booklets or whatever that passes that if you have to have paid parking, if you frequent your shop or whatever, that you have a punch card and that maybe you work with the city to pay that or something. But to say that you know the city should be having free parking for all the tenants that you know people have businesses for and everything is a disservice to not only the growth of the city but to you as people that own businesses and property downtown. This is going to benefit you in the end. You're going to be able to get more rents and you'll work that out. Um, but we need to have a paid parking system that is going to dis discourage people from staying on the city streets downtown 24-7 and encourage changing so that you can get more business and et cetera. So when you're talking about paid parking, we really need to encourage people parking in the lots, like that are away from city streets, because that's where we're gonna get, you know, our businesses to have more business, you know. So I I have you look at that. Um the paid the permits, um, I think that's somewhat going to come back and bite us. We, I, I think you need to look that through, is that um, if you have permits and you're going to have them be so cheap or over unlimited times, I think you're not going to have the turn in traffic on the downtown streets. And as far as college students <coughs> and tenants that live downtown, You've got to think about developing three-tiered parking. We need more parking than the Durkee Street is currently affords us. I mean, 218 spots is it that we're losing? Um, Durkee Street? 289. 289. That's even worse. But we're, we're going to need more than 300 parking spots if this goes well with developing downtown. But that is a question that I think all of us have, including city residents. How close are we to knowing if Prime is going to go forward with developing the Durkee Street lot? We do need to plan for it, but I, I think that's a concern that I hear a lot with residents is that, you know, so far, like, you know, you had mentioned, we put a lot of money in infrastructure to develop the parking down by the waterfront. I think that still needs to be developed, hopefully, but um, nothing's happened there. So, you know, we spin our wheels and sometimes we don't go anywhere. Um, the committee is apprised of business people. I'm glad that John's on the committee now, but I don't see any residents. You know, I don't necessarily want to be on the committee, but I know a lot of people that live in the downtown corridor, and we, you know, struggle with parking and other issues. And I don't know, in everybody's wisdom, nobody got, you know, put on the committee that actually lives in the downtown corridor. So I think. Ethan does. Ethan does. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I take that back. Okay. I take that back. Um, <laughs> close. <laughs> a stretch. But um, when you're talking about the kiosks, I've been to a lot of cities where um, if I, I'm hoping that the parking committee doesn't recommend something that's um, not going to be user friendly to people that don't just have smartphones. I think that's going to really bite us in the end. I know that I visit New Rochelle and other cities a lot, and they invested a lot to go away from the paper that you put in the windshield where you know people can go by, whoever's enforcing it, and just look, to something a little bit more high tech where they can just scan it. And to service those kiosks, um, I would say that when I spoke to a public um, employee that actually works for the city of New Rochelle, he was one of the people that actually installed them, and he said that they've had nothing but trouble since they've been installed. So I caution the city to go to something so high tech that it's going to be cost prohibitive and also a lot of maintenance. But I definitely think that you need to go to kiosks. Having meters is ridiculous, you know. Um, and uh, the again, I'll just mention this again, but I don't know if it's going to go anywhere if Matt or Ethan can have any input. I think if Prime does develop that, I think that they should. Um, work with the city to have 35 parking spaces in another garage. I think it's ridiculous that they are not going to be investing more money. For them to say that it's cost prohibitive is BS, I'm sorry to say, but you know, I really think that they're going to benefit from this and I think that they need to show a little bit more good faith in developing 35 more spots. Um, not, I know that Mr. Brown is working with the city on um, putting some county money in. The Bridge Street auction parking lot that is primarily used by the employees right now in Bridge Street auction, I think would be a perfect site to have a three-tiered parking garage. And I think that um, when you're working with the county or when we're talking with the city, I think there's ways to work towards that. I don't think that we have to bite ourselves in the proverbial butt to say that we have to go all the way at once build the, you know, the um, substrate so that it can support more tiers as we need them and have maybe two tiers to start with. But I think that if we just have, even at the other site, which apparently now with the Glens Falls National Bank, I find it hard to believe that the whole surface area has piping underneath and there's no way to build any tiered parking there. I'm, I'm sorry if I feel that that's a little bit of a stretch, but if we can't have tiered parking there, we need to have tiered parking somewhere. I think just ground level parking is not going to be sufficient. But um, I think whatever plan you put in place, you really need to encourage people to park in lots um, that are surrounding the downtown. And I do agree. Unfortunately, I, I think it's a pipe dream to think that you're going to be successful in having people that own private lots to work with the city to develop parking and satisfy our deficiency. I, that would be nice to have some of them, and I think there's a way to encourage some of that, and maybe with Community Bank and um, you know Division Street being up, I think that St. John's parking lot on Couch Street is never used, even by their patrons. So there's lots around that are relatively close, but to say that you know, you're gonna work out some kind of partnership with them I think is too wishy-washy. I think it's going to be difficult unless we have something that we own to enforce. And I think that's part of the problem you mentioned is that some of the private lots or sometimes when you pay for parking, it's not enforced. So I don't, you know, that becomes a problem. But thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Any other members of the public wish to address the committee? Seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Yeah. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. All right, thank you, everybody. Matt, is Karen from my office called you? She did, yeah. I spoke to her uh, this afternoon. You did, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she gave me an update on where you guys are at. That's good to know. I guess you had some trouble with SHIPO and we need to reorient your documents all like that. That's just part of it. Yep. Yeah.